Number 9. Time Zones Day and night happen at different times at different places on Earth. In fact, it's always day somewhere and night somewhere else. Okay, time zones. I think part of the problem is people who come from the spinning heliocentric globular Earth model, as soon as they hear flat, they just try to squish the Earth into a pancake and keep everything else the way it is in the heliocentric globular Earth model. Meaning, okay, now you just got this flat disk inside a solar system. And they try to apply the dynamics of the solar system in a, in a massively huge sun 93 million miles away, you know, over a flat Earth and apply what they know in that paradigm to this paradigm. Well, that doesn't work. And, you know, as I'm, and it just, it's just a knee jerk reaction from people who haven't done any research at all, which is what I found predominantly to be the case. 99.9999999999% of my, especially early detractors, did zero research of their own. In lockstep, they all just had a programmed response, knee jerk response, and there were always the same responses. Um, but I'm going, well, wait a minute. If we're on a circular, still flat Earth set on pillars under a dome within which the sun, moon, and stars are placed on day four, according to the Bible, then the sun and moon are what's moving and the stars are what mo are, are moving, not the earth. And therefore, they are a lot closer and a lot smaller, as I've mentioned in the previous segments. So I created this animation. You guys have probably seen this. A lot of people have used it in their videos and stuff like that. It got mirrored uh, quite a bit, where all I did is use a... Uh, 3D software called Poser, which just basically, like it sounds, allows you to pose and move 3D objects. And so I created a circular flat earth map and just created a little ball and made made the ball a point light. And what a point light is, is basically uh, just like it sounds like a point of light that you can adjust the parameters for how much light it throws off. And so, yeah, if you make it a really big light and make it like with a lot of throw, then it would light up the entire Earth. But if, you, if you're if you God and you're creating a clock and a enclosed world system where there's a sun that rules over the day, uh, then you don't need it to be a point light that's going to throw over the whole Earth because you want to have night. So you just reduce the throw of the light. And it's not a spotlight. Okay, it's not a, a you know a flashlight shining down on the Earth. It's shining out in 360 degrees in all directions, all the way around. You know, up, down, around, side to side, everywhere. But the reach of the the throw of the light is just limited. And if that thing's going around, well, guess what? You have time zones. Problem solved. No big deal. Now I should note something else, and that is that this animation is not to scale. The sun is not the right size, nor probably the right height over the disk of the Earth, at least according to the various estimations and things that I've read in Zetetic Astronomy and other books. So this being the case, it would explain why the sun couldn't be seen from those areas that are in nighttime. And if I were to shrink the sun and make it to scale and, and at the right height, probably the only thing I'd have to do would be to adjust the light attenuation setting uh, to increase it to compensate for the smaller potentially closer sun so that it basically had the same throw as what you see here. And also you probably have to take into account the reflectivity off of the firmament, which would scatter the light in certain ways that has been depicted in a number of memes you've probably seen online. So uh, these are some things to consider when looking at this animation. Okay. So number nine, time zones don't prove a globe. Time zones can work just as well on a disc. You know, while I was, Looking into all, you know, the how the sun works and how time zones work and things like that, I, you know, naturally you start to wonder, well, how do the seasons work? And, and you may have seen this video before. A lot of people put it out there. Well, this came as a result of another video that I was working on when I was trying to figure out how does the 24-hour sun or the alleged 24-hour sun work in Antarctica. So first, I wanted to see how it would work or if it even would work, on a globe. So I created this little animation and uh, with the Earth at a 23.4 degree tilt. And um, you can see here that only certain parts of Antarctica would be in 24-hour light. 
uh, the parts where it dips in closer toward the pole, that's where you would get a 24 hour sun if it in fact actually exists. So I'm using Stellarium. It's heliocentric globe-based software now created by people who believe in the ball. And I was modeling it and it allows you to figure out, you know, what direction you want to point the camera, what type of camera you want to use and whatnot. And you could set your location. So I set my location to Antarctica in, uh, I think it was the Ross ice shelf area. And I set the duration up for an entire year. I wanted to see the whole year from the beginning of January to the end of December to see what the sun was doing. And so you can set the animation up and you could set the speed and duration and all that. So, you know, yeah, I've done it for an entire year. You can make the whole year go by pretty fast and observe what the sun and moon are doing. And the software also allows you to turn off the stars and turn off the ground plane. And I got this idea, instead of just looking in one of the cardinal directions, north, south, east, or west, I decided to angle the camera so it was looking straight up. And the software actually allows you to, like, as if you're pulling the camera into the ground and put it in sort of like a fisheye lens mode where you can actually see all four cardinal points at the same time. And so I'm watching the sun and moon go over me in a counterclockwise fashion because I'm, I'm, I'm looking up from the ground. So it's coming up from my right and going over me to my left. So from east to west, you know, and after I modeled the whole thing and looked at it and with the ground plane off and the stars off, it's just a black background with the sun and moon going around counterclockwise. Well, I thought, man, I wonder what that would look like over the flat earth map. And so I punched out the black in my video software and put in the image of the azimuth equidistant map. And then I, all I did, the only thing I did to that video was do a horizontal flip because it was going counterclockwise from the ground view looking up. And since I'm now looking down from above, uh, it, it needed to switch you know, from going counterclockwise to going clockwise. That's all I did. That's the only thing I did. And, and what I discovered was, and even though this is not 100% perfect, it actually shows the sun and moon going in an outer ring and an inner ring, you know, going between the two tropics and going over the equator. So in our winter in January, it's going in the outer rim circle. And in our summer, it's going in the inner rim circle, you know, going between the two tropics over the equator. And it the software actually made the sun speed up and slow down. Again, I didn't do that. I didn't do anything to it. And I'm sitting there going, wow. And I'm thinking, did this software actually just show me how the four seasons work on a flat earth map? I don't know, but it, <laughs> it sure seems to work out pretty good. And if you haven't had a chance to, you should listen to the show that Zen Garcia and I did on it because he took what I did here and basically was able to unlock the chapters of the Book of Enoch to talk about the path and the course of the heavenly luminaries. Fascinating stuff. But I don't have time to get into all that here, so let's go on to number eight.